um, helping people internationally plan their taxes and execute uh, uh, their planning worldwide. Um, the reason I was asked to come here was because I wrote a book. And uh, it's um, a book about business and integrating the, um, integrating the way we think about life with the way we do uh, business. I was um, inspired to do so by um, uh, this quote by Nelson Mandela. It basically says that everything we, uh, all of us can be a lot more than we are. And basically our fear is not that we're inadequate, that we cannot achieve uh, what we want to achieve, but basically that we could achieve a lot more than we are achieving and that we're all some way underperforming. And that once we let go of the fear of performing, we can achieve anything we want. We can be anything we want to be. And I came across this quote when I was studying uh, an MBA at INSEAD a couple of years ago. And um, we were a class with about 25 uh, CFOs, uh, people that are in the top echelons of uh, worldwide companies, including Tata. And all of us made uh, a pledge to do something really challenging. And eight of us ended up starting a winery in Argentina, which has proven to be more challenging than we originally thought, but which after five years became one of the 10 most famous wines in Argentina. And one of my challenges that I took up was to write a book. So that's where I am. I had never written a book before. Um, it took me uh, about a year to finish. And uh, I must say, it is one of the more rewarding things I ever did. It's a great boost to the ego. Uh, now I'm an author and everyone recognizes me as such. I can be found on Amazon.com. I get fan mail every day. I got uh, three requests for marriage uh, via the internet by ladies I never met uh, before. Two from the Philippines, so I'm not quite sure that <laughs> they actually understood my book. Um, and I got a person that said, I read your book, I want to invest in your wine project. Uh, I have a million dollars, can I join? Uh, well, we did a lot of due diligence, and in the end, uh, uh, we let the guy join. Uh, writing a book helps to sharpen uh, the mind. It helps you to focus. Uh, you spend most of your day cluttering your head with thoughts about the future, thoughts about the past. Uh, if at least you get most of those thoughts on paper, you can clear your mind and live in the, in the, in the now, which is the most important because it's the only part where we really have an impact here and now. It's a great way to make friends. And uh, it has created, for me at least, space for a next step. And uh, I'm working on a next book that I hope will come out uh, uh, somewhere next year. Well, some of the key thoughts I put in this book were uh, known both in India and in the West. Uh, I'm only one person. Uh, there is no such thing as a life balance. You take all of what you are to your work. And you cannot be a different person at work than you are at home or with your friends. You're always the same person. If you do different things at home than at work, then there is something uh, not right in your approach. You're somewhere not fair to yourself. You're somewhere not uh, honest. The other thing is uh, very known to the Hindus and Buddhists among us. We're all one. All of our interests are aligned. We're all working. Um, for the same needs, the same uh, values, and we all are equally valued. The more, the, the, the more crucial one from a business point of view is maybe um, I am what I think I am. Anything we want to achieve, we can achieve when we put our minds to it. You talk to any entrepreneur you ever meet, any person who has made it from nothing to something big, 
and they, they will say, you know, I had a nice idea that anyone else could also have had, but I just worked very hard on it and I made it happen. The people that don't make things happen are the ones that just don't work hard on it. They're no focus, that are not uh, putting other things aside to achieve what they want to achieve. All of us can achieve anything we want if we put our minds to it and make it happen. Anything I do will affect the people around me. If we do good things, it will affect our environment positively. If we do bad things, it will harm us in the long run. And, a, and a running a business is one of the best ways of doing good in your environment. You deal with employees, you deal with suppliers, you deal with clients, you have an impact on uh, the environment. It's a perfect way to get the best out of yourself. And I guess getting the best out of yourself is one of the, the core uh, drivers that makes you feel satisfied, that makes you feel happy in life. Because what is the purpose of life? Uh, this is a Western uh, definition. And well, my slides are on, uh, on, uh, on the internet, just like the previous speakers. The purpose of life is to enjoy it, is to be happy, is to uh, create friendships, make other people happy, take pleasure in your family and in the work that you're doing. And it is much more about enjoying what you're doing and how you're doing it than the numbers of dollars, pesos, or rupees that you're acquiring. Those are just a way of keeping score. They're just a way of uh, uh, making success visible to the outside world, but it's not what makes people happy. It is the way in which you uh, build a business, the way in which you acquire the wealth that is much more important. In uh, Indian uh, philosophy, basically the same elements come up. Uh, they're called the four puru shartas. My, my Sanskrit is a bit rusty. Um, they come back to dharma, the, the things that drive you to be perfect in what uh, we want to be. Uh, the, the, the inner drive to do one thing rather than another. Uh, striving for success, artha. Pleasure, karma, and finally, moksha, self-realization at a spiritual level. Those are the same things that come back in philosophies all over the world, East and West. In the end, what we want to do in life is to live, enjoy what we're doing, to love, uh, enjoy our family, our friends, colleagues, clients, to learn to every day sharpen our mind by being involved in uh, challenging uh, experiences and to leave a legacy. As the previous speaker said, to leave a legacy is very important to people who are successful <coughs> to a certain extent. How do you translate that to business? Uh, in my business, we are in uh, company management, trust business. We're building long-term relationships, passing to uh, generations. Uh, our company started uh, 23 years ago. My current uh, uh, assistant is the daughter of my previous assistant and the granddaughter of the lady that I worked with uh, 25 years ago in my previous job. Three generations of assistants. Uh, many of our clients nowadays are the sons and daughters of the clients we started with 20 years ago. We, of our first 10 clients 22 years ago, uh, three have died, two became employees, and five are still our clients. None of them are out of our mind. Um, building long-term relationships uh, is, I think, one of the key uh, successes, uh, the key drivers for success. Anyone you meet on your way up, you will meet again on your way down. What goes around comes around. Greed leads to disaster. Uh, anger, fear are not good drivers for business. 
you, any deal you ever do has to make both parties happy. If a deal doesn't make both parties happy, don't do it. It will lead to frustration down the road sooner or later. The greed of people like Madoff, big banks like Credit Suisse, results ultimately in the downfall of both the people that were greedy and the people that were greedy enough to believe the stories those people were spinning. Madoff had uh, returns on investment that were impossible to explain, and yet people were lining up uh, for years to be able to spend money with him. I actually met the guy. I visited him together with a private office manager, an asset manager who had a 20-minute slot to make a pitch to Madoff, and Madoff said, you know, I'm fully invested. Uh, I really cannot handle more money. And this asset manager basically got on his knees and, and asked, please, will you take my money? And he said, okay, I'll take 20 million of you. And that's what he did. He never saw back the 20 million. Nicest chap I ever met. Um, only mutually rewarding relationships lead to stable success over a long run. And especially people who are in the family business, uh, the family office building, the uh, multi-generational uh, businesses have to realize this. Very few businesses survive three generations. Very little wealth survives three generations because uh, the way the people that found those businesses is often not inherited by the children and definitely not by the grandchildren. Mm, one, important asset, uh, one important aspect I want to mention here is that we're going, uh, as the previous speaker said, very soon to a world where everything is transparent. Uh, not only God knows everything you see, uh, very soon also the tax inspector. And uh, if you're wealthy, the last thing you want is to worry about uh, how you have structured things, the way uh, that you have set up things can collapse on you and you'll end up in jail because you've been evading taxes or you have been doing uh, transactions that turn out to be illegal and lead to big punishments and penalties. A good, light, a good night's sleep is probably worth more than another painting on the wall or another yacht in the harbor. So my take on trends for wealthy families, uh, people have a lot less trust in banks uh, nowadays, so a lot of people are moving their money out of banks into private equity funds, into private family offices, into smaller uh, pools of assets, and they use banks for execution only. That's because banks are faceless. They're valueless. They have no values. They are there for money only, and they are not there to stand with you when things are uh, going wrong. When there is hard times, when people need a loan most, that's when they will not get it from the bank. The bank will always take your deposit, but it will only give you a loan if you don't need it. That's the way uh, banks are, and that's what people realize when there is a financial crisis. And financial crises are uh, as predictable as the weather. They come every couple of years, uh, sometimes a year earlier or a year later, but they come and they'll come again and again. Uh, family offices um, can be much more flexible in uh, organizing wealth. Very often nowadays, families come together in multi-family uh, uh, organizations. They co-invest jointly in uh, pre-IPOs or in startup companies, in uh, uh, segments of business that one of the families is an expert in, uh, another families will support by trusting each other. Uh, I work a lot with Latin America and I've seen many uh, big Latin American families come together to jointly build an airport, uh, develop a real estate project, uh, solar panels uh, projects, uh, 
uh, that one by themselves could not do alone. Uh, banks are f uh, few and far between in Latin America, and together they can make uh, bigger projects uh, help and work. And um, family offices also play an important role in uh, keeping the family business together. Uh, people who build a business don't want that business to fall apart after they die, and not always it is possible for such a company to become a public company or take another shape in life. Uh, a professionally run family office can take care of making the business